this video, we will set up and run the Fluent Solver for a Y duct. We will enable the energy and turbulence models, set up our boundary conditions, and create calculation activities such as a report plot of the outlet temperature. If you started the Fluent Solver from Fluent Meshing or Workbench, you should see your mesh already imported. Otherwise, go to File, Read, and Mesh to load it independently. On the left, you can see the outline of the various solver settings. The general workflow is from top to bottom, but you can always return to previous tasks. The ribbon on the top functions much the same as the outline. For our simulation, we will use the steady, pressure-based solver. The pressure solver is applicable to a large number of problems. The density-based solver is better suited to highly compressible flows, such as high Mach number flow. Switch to the Physics tab. Here, we see our solver options again, various models we can enable, the materials database, and the cell zone and boundary conditions. If we expand models in the outline tree, you will see many of the same options. It's up to you to decide which is easier to navigate. First, let's enable heat transfer modeling. This is done simply by clicking the checkbox next to energy. Next, Let's choose a turbulence model. Click on Viscous, and we can see the various models available. Different turbulence models are used based on the type of flows present in the domain, and each model has further options for fine-tuning. We'll use the standard k-epsilon model with standard wall functions. We'll go ahead and leave all the default values as they are. Next, we need to make sure we have the correct fluid. In our problem, we have air coming into the domain. Click Create and Edit under Materials, and we can see that the Materials menu has been pulled up. We can see that Air is the default material. If we click on Fluent Database, we can see many more built-in choices. Let's go back to Air. We'll be using slightly different properties than the default values. Change the density to 1.137, the specific heat to 1007, thermal conductivity to 0 0.02689 and viscosity to 1.903 times 10 to the negative fifth. We'll assume these properties won't change much over the tight temperature difference and leave them as constants. Click Change Create and Close. Next we'll go to Cell Zone Conditions. We see Y duct as our name selection from space claim and fluent meshing. We need to ensure that the type is fluid and that the working fluid is air. We can see the volume was correctly brought in as a fluid. If we click Edit, we can see that air has been applied. If you had multiple fluids in the domain, this would be where you would choose them. Switch to Boundary Conditions. Recall that Fluent Meshing already applied the type of boundary based on the specific name selections. Click Edit for Velocity Inlet 1. We have 1.5 meters per second for the velocity magnitude. We'll change the turbulence boundary condition to intensity and hydraulic diameter. We'll use 1% for the intensity and the hydraulic diameter of 0.75 meters, which is that of the inlet. Switch to the Thermal tab and enter a temperature of 323.15 Kelvin. For velocity inlet 2, we have a velocity magnitude of 3.5. We'll use the same turbulence as before, and a temperature of 298.15 Kelvin. For our pressure outlet, We'll leave 0 gauge pressure and 300 Kelvin, but we will apply the same turbulence conditions as before. What we're doing is selecting boundary conditions in case there is any backflow from the outlet into the domain. Usually we don't want backflow, so the outlet should be placed in a position so that it's not in a recirculation zone but at the beginning of any CFD model, there might be some amount of backflow. For our last boundary condition, we will check that a no-slip condition has been applied to the walls.
This concludes part one of the solver setup for a Y duct. In the next section, we will finish the solver options and start the calculations. Thank you for watching.